Hello, Chem 122 lab students. This is Experiment 20, the Acid Base Equilibria and Buffers Lab. The first thing in this lab that you would have to do is prepare uh, 0.01 molar solutions from stock 1 molar solutions for hydrochloric acid, HCl, acetic acid, HC2H3O2, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH. The easiest way to do that would be to take 20 drops, which is about 1 mil in drop count, uh, and add it to a 100 mil graduated cylinder. You would fill the cylinder then with deionized de water uh, up to the 100 mil mark, and that does the 1 to uh, 100 uh, dilution, which moves the decimal two places, and you now have some 0.01 molar solutions. You're going to take some of the 1 molar stock solutions, and now your new 0.01 molar solutions, and you're going to test these with pH test strips. Um, then you can use the color scale on the package of the test strip to make a pH estimate. Let's take a look at that. So on the packaging, they have uh, a color code that once you have your uh, stick coated with your solution, you can then match the color code and estimate the pH to the nearest whole pH number. So you have one side for acids, the other side for bases. What you're going to do next is you're going to uh, measure the pH using a pH meter. Now the pH meter has to be properly calibrated and tested to make sure that it's working correct. The way we do that is we use a pH 4, uh, 7, and 10 buffer and we go into the calibration menu and so that's going to be shown in a separate part of the demonstration where I calibrate the pH uh, meter. Um, we we'll also want you to then predict what you think the color of the 4.010 molar uh, solutions of the acids and bases above will be in bromothiol blue in indicator. And then you're going to actually test that uh, color with half of your sample so that you can compare the before and after to see what the color change looks like. And then you're going to record that color observed. So that's part A of the experiment. All right, so we're going to uh, need to calibrate our, uh, we're going to calibrate our pH meter. We need to have it um, calibrated for the range that we're going to be working uh, in the acid base buffer lab, which goes all the way from acidic to basic. And so we have uh, three different uh, buffers here. We have pH 4, pH 7, and pH 10 that we're going to calibrate this instrument with. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get set up. You always want to check your electrode. They have these electrode storage bottles that has some, um, you know, electrolyte storage solution, which is really basically buffer seven. And it um, just keeps the, the electrode hydrated. If you loosen the cap, then you can actually pull this um, electrode out. And then we always want to rinse it between solutions and then wipe off the excess so you just wipe off the excess on the outside and then you go into the calibration mode on the pH meter and then so it's going to um, bring up the first calibration and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in the pH buffer 4 and I'm going to stir it around so that it gets moving across the electrode and then I'm going to let it sit, and then it's going to realize that I'm auto, uh, automatically uh, selecting pH 4 buffer, and it's going to lock in at 4.01. Sometimes it'll be right on, and sometimes it'll have like plus or minus 1 in the last place. So once I have that there, I want to hit the calibration button because it's now storing the calibration 1 point. So now I'm going to rinse it again, shake off the excess, wipe off the outside of the, of the probe, go to the next buffer, which is pH 7. Going to stick it in there, stir it around a little so that it starts getting into the range. 
and then let it sit. Normally you would use a stir bar and have this solution in a beaker, but I'm just gonna quickly let it find pH seven. So it locked in on 7.00. I'm gonna hit calibrate again. So that's, that's storing uh, the second point. So now I'm going to rinse this again. Wipe off the excess, shake off the excess. Go to the last buffer, which is pH 10. Stir it around in there. Maybe a couple of little times, get the solution moving across the electrode. And then I'm gonna let it sit and realize that it's trying to lock in on 10 and it locked in at 10.01. As Soon as I am done with that, I'm going to hit measure and it's actually going to store that third point. It came up with a slope of 95.8 that tells the meter how to relate um, the electrode voltage into pH scale. And so it uses a calibration curve. And so, so now um, if I wanted to measure uh, a solution on this instrument, what I actually have to do is hit measure and what it does is it auto ranges and then it would lock in on a number. Whenever you calibrate a, a meter like this, you actually wanna measure some of your calibration standards to make sure it's within 5%. If not, then you should redo your calibration. Um, so now this meter's all ready to use for the acid base um, uh, pH uh, measurements for the acid base buffer lab. What I have here in part A is I've taken a series of acids and bases. So the first one here is hydrochloric acid. And I put some into a graduated cylinder. Then I pipetted out one mil into this volumetric flask, which we've brought up to 100 mils. So we're gonna put this in this first beaker here. Okay. Our second beaker is the same thing with acetic acid. Put that in our second beaker. And then we have sodium hydroxide. And our third beaker. And what we've done is to dilute this down so that uh, we can create a series of varying pHs. And then finally, we have ammonium hydroxide. Put that in our fourth beaker. So in part A, we're going to compare, very, first of all, the fidelity of quality in pH reading between the pH paper and the pH meter. Um, so I'm first gonna measure all four of these with pH paper, then we'll measure them with the meter over here. And then uh, we're going to add some bromothymol blue, which is a, an indicator that changes color based on the pH. And then uh, you'll make some predictions before we do this, then I'll add it uh, to each of those. So the first one here is hydrochloric acid. So you submerge all the indicator strips beneath the liquid and then compare it to your master. So there's a series of colored indicators on there, so you do your best to tell me which one it is. And our second is acetic acid. Again, we want to submerge it completely beneath the surface of the liquid and then compare it to our master. Okay. Third is sodium hydroxide. One of the reasons I love the pH meter is because I'm colorblind. Fortunately, I can tell which one's yellow. I'm trying to make sure you can see this because the light in here sucks. There we go. Okay, so give us your best estimation of its pH. And finally, ammonium hydroxide. OK, 
Okay. All right, now we're going to switch over and do each of these with the pH meter. All right, so we, uh, in order to read the pH, we rinse our pH meter with purified water, and then we stick it in and push this button here to measure. So you're going to record your pH value as soon as it stops. And then use the pH number that, the, that it reports in order to determine for part A um, whether it's an acid or a base and which ones are strong acids or strong bases based on their relative pH values. All right, finally. All right, so our second one here, we rinse it and then we're going to switch it into our acetic acid. All right. And then we switch to sodium hydroxide. Just about perfect. Once again, wait until the number stops changing on the display. This is also slightly indicative of my technique. <laughs> Whether or not your pipetting is accurate. That one was pretty damn good. Can I say that in the video? Yeah, that's fine. All right. <laughs> All right. That was, I don't think I could have done it better than that. All right. <laughs> but finally, ammonium hydroxide. Wow. That was pretty good. Now, as you're waiting for this number, uh, make your predictions about what color you expect the solutions to change when we add bromothymol blue to them. Because that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay, looks like that one's not going to change. All right. So you've made your predictions. If not, you're bad. I'm going to add three drops or so to each one. Oops. We have an acid spill. They're not mixing very well. All right, so this is our hydrochloric acid. Note the color. And our acetic acid. Note the color. And our sodium hydroxide. Note the color. And our ammonium hydroxide. Note the color. Okay. That concludes the experiments for part A. Next, in part B, we're going to be getting some salt solutions, right? So we're going to get 25 mils of 0.1 molar sodium chloride, sodium carbonate, ammonium chloride and ammonium carbonate. You're going to put them in small beakers, something like a 50 mil beaker, and we're going to measure the pH of the DiH2O and the pH of these four solutions. We're going to determine then which of these solutions is acidic, basic, or neutral. So we have to talk about the pH scale. So the pH scale normally goes from 0 to 14. And at 7, we call that neutral. However, pH can vary due to dissolved carbon dioxide. And so quite often, the lab water can go as low as like 5.5. Um, sometimes, uh, for some strange reason, the pH can run a little high. And so we're going to broaden the neutral range to say anything around 5.5 to about 8 on the pH scale. We're going to call that essentially neutral. Now, the reason why this can happen also is the pH meter electrode can get dehydrated. Uh, when it's dried out, it doesn't uh, measure the conductivity, which it uses to convert to pH very well. Um, and so we can get all kinds of things happening. We get cross-contamination of solutions. Uh, and so we're kind of accounting for that by broadening the range. So we kind of know which solutions should be neutral and which solutions should be uh, acidic and which ones should be basic, right? So um, use your best judgment as shown in the lab demonstration video. So 
we're going to then want you to write equations for part of the salt that would react with the water. That reaction, when it reacts with water, is called the hydrolysis reaction. So, for example, if I have a weak acid, HA, the A minus part, because it comes from weak, will react with the water in the hydrolysis reaction to produce conjugate ions. It produces some of the HA weak acid, and it grabbed the H off of the water, which is HOH, and so then what's left is OH minus, and so the solution would be basic. That's it for part B. So remember, parts of the salt will not hydrolyze the water, and uh, maybe even both parts of the salt, like if they're both from strong, they will not react with the water. But if a piece is from a weak uh, acid, then it will react with the um, water. And um, if, the, um, if the cation right, is from a weak base, it will also react with the water. So keep that in mind. All right, in part B, we are going to be looking at the pH of several different salt solutions. So from this side to, from my left to right, which would be your left to right, I guess, because that's the way the camera looks, we have purified water. And I've already put some in a beaker. Then we have sodium chloride. So we'll do them as we go. So first of all, we're going to start with the pH of water. And this is our purified water. So um, what do you think the pH of our purified water is? I've never measured it at this campus, so I will be surprised just like you are. Yep, I'm definitely surprised by that. And again, as you make note of the pH number, you're also going to be classifying each of these substances as acid, base, or neutral. Base. And yeah. All right, finally, 6.93. Okay, we'll move on to the next one which is sodium chloride. Oh good, that one didn't take nearly as long, okay? All right, that was sodium chloride. Next up is sodium carbonate. Okay, that appears to be that. Next up is ammonium chloride. Okay. Surprises me. And then ammonium carbonate is our last one for part B. Okay, that looks like that's that. So that's the end of uh, data collection for part B. Part C, you're going to be measuring the pH of 25 mils of a 0.1 molar uh, unknown weak acid. We're going to record the unknown code and then you're going to calculate the dissociation constant Ka. The way you're going to do that is you're going to have uh, the initial concentration of your uh, weak acid, which is 0 0.10 molar, and you're going to measure the pH, right? And so from the pH, we can actually convert that into the equilibrium amount of the hydronium ion, H3O+. So that would go down in the bottom right of my table. So once we get all of the pieces of HA, A minus, and H3O plus at equilibrium, we can plug them into the expression for Ka, and we can calculate the acid dissociation constant. 
we're also going to be asked to calculate the percent dissociation. And the way you do that is you take the amount of H3O plus at equilibrium, which came from your pH, and you compare it to the original HA concentration, which was 0 0.10 molar, times 100 to get your percentage. So that's parts C um, purpose, right, is to figure out can you then identify what this weak acid is? How are you going to do that? We're going to need to take the Ka and then compare it to the Ka values in the appendix of your textbook and get the one that's closest to the, your calculated value of Ka. And then you can, in the final questions, identify what you think your weak acid would have been. They're going to ask you to also then compare that weak acid to... Um, so you're going to be asked to compare the value of your Ka that you get from your calculation to the Ka's in Appendix D of your textbook. Um, and then you're going to be asked to, to determine if your acid is weaker or stronger um, than acetic acid, which has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So you'll be able to determine that based on the magnitude of your Ka compared to the 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Part C, we're going to look at an unknown weak acid. So in this one, it, this is B, in case you can't tell, it's been written here, 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 here. Okay. So what I've done is I've already put 25 mils in this graduated cylinder, and then we're going to read the pH the same way we did with all of the rest of our samples. And then based on the result, you may be able to determine what the weak acid is. The smell gives it away. Yeah, but you're not here, so you can't smell it. <laughs> so all you have is the numbers, which is how it should be. All right, that's that. So that's your number for your unknown weak acid. That concludes the data collection for Part C. Part D of the experiment is about buffers. You can actually make a buffer as long as you have two components, right? You need to have a weak acid and its conjugate ion or a weak base and its conjugate ion. We're actually going to make two buffers, buffer A and buffer B. The first buffer we're going to make by dissolving some of the conjugate ion from a salt. So we're going to dissolve 0.65 grams of sodium um, acetate in 100 mils of a 0.1 molar acetic acid solution. Once you do that, you're going to divide that 100 mils of solution into two parts so that you'll be able to test it by adding small drops of acid and base to it later. The second buffer, buffer B, you're going to prepare by taking and pipetting um, 5 mils of a 1 molar sodium hydroxide into 100 mils of the 0.1 molar acetic acid solution. When that reacts with that, it's going to generate some of the conjugate ion, and so we're also going to have a buffered system. You're going to measure the pH of that solution with a pH meter, divide it into two parts, again, for later, we're going to add some drops of acid and base to see how the pH of these buffers change. To compare a buffered system versus an unbuffered system's change in pH when we add small drops of acid and base, we're going to also take 100 milliliters of distilled water to represent the unbuffered system. We're going to measure the pH of the water and divide it into two parts again so that we can put drops of the acid and base. To each of the solutions where you have the two parts, one part you're going to drop in three drops of one molar HCl from dropper bottles, and to the other part you're going to drop uh, three drops of one molar sodium hydroxide. Uh, and you're also doing this with the water so you can compare. And then you're going to measure the pH with the pH meter. Right? So you should see whether or not the buffering capacity of the buffer is exceeded by these three drops. And so you're going to be asked questions about that. So think about whether or not the pH changes as drastically as it does in the water. 
Next, you're going to be asked to write chemical equations for the acetate buffer equilibrium system. So acetic acid in um, equilibrium with um, the acetate ion, right? And then you're going to have to write chemical equations for when you added the acid to the buffer system, which part of the buffer does it react with as a reactant, and then write the conjugates on the other side of the equilibrium. Similarly, for um, adding base to the buffer system, we're going to write the reaction for that, thinking about which part the OH- would play with in the buffer system, forming conjugates on the other side of the equilibrium system. So that's it for pre-lab part D. We're going to set up a series of buffers. So the first one, which we're going to go ahead and set up on the pH meter, so you have something to watch while I'm mixing up the others. What we've done here is we have some purified, uh, 100 mils of purified water, and we are going to put that into this large beaker and measure its pH. And that way, since we know it's ugly, notice there was some hands in there that are not wearing gloves for our pH lab. <laughs> Good thing it's just water. Or is it? Okay. All right, so the other, the other two, I'll go ahead and start prepping now. The other two, we're going to start with 100 mils of acetic acid. The first 100 mils, we're going to add to 0 0.650, exactly, uh, grams of sodium acetate powder. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add that and start mixing it because it takes a second to dissolve. And the third one, what we have done is we've put five mils of one molar sodium hydroxide in, and then we're going to add our 100 mils of 0.1 molar acetic acid to it. Okay, so go ahead and get those started mixing. While we demonstrate with the water what we're going to do after that. There's our water. Should have pushed the button first, I didn't save any time. Or maybe it's already ready. All right, close, maybe. Yep, all right, so the water is slightly not pure. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that now, we're going to split it into two fractions of approximately the same volume. Okay, all right, the first one, we are going to add put it in here, take a reading, make sure it's still what we think it was. It's got to set back to normal because the storage solution we put it in is of course a different pH than the buffer itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a few drops of this one molar hydrochloric acid, three drops to be specific, and we're going to measure the effect of adding acid on the the buffer of our water. Okay. Don't bump the camera. One, two, three drops. And you can see that the acid addition of acid has caused some change. Okay, we're going to take the second fraction. That one set aside of our purified water. To this one, we are going to add three drops of one molar sodium hydroxide. Okay, we're going to add our base now and measure the effect. One, two, three drops makes on the pH. And look at that. Okay, all right, so that's an unbuffered system. That's why I wanted to do that one first. That and the other requires some mixing. So from there, we're going to go to the buffered system with sodium hydroxide in our acetic acid. Okay. So we'll put that, our electrode, into it and measure it before we add anything, then we'll again split it into two fractions. Okay, 
All right, so that's the un, uh, unmodified buffer pH. I'm going to split it into two fractions here. And just like before, we'll be adding acid to one and base to the other and measuring the effect of addition of acid or base to our buffered system, or what we hope is a buffered system. Okay. All right. So to the first one, we'll add acid. three drops. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna rinse that one and then we'll put the other one in and we'll add a base to it. One, two, three drops. All right? And last but not least final buffered system is the sodium acetate powder in our acetic acid. So this is before we do anything to it and then again we will be splitting it into two fractions. Okay, all right, so that's our starting pH. I'm going to split that into two fractions. The first we will add acid. I'm doing that because it's alphabetical and it's easy to remember if you always add acid first. So our one, two, three drops. Okay. And then we'll take our final fraction and we'll add three drops of our base. four drops. I hope that doesn't make a difference. And remember when you are looking at these we're comparing the fractions to their original uh, larger volume whatever the pH was before we split it. Okay that concludes the data collection portion of this lab. Good luck on your lab reports.